All righty, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Daily Roundup. Can you guys see me? Can you see me? I guess you guys can, huh? So I can sure. Sounds like it looks like my video is going. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Bernan says, uh, oh my gosh, you said something in Spanish. How in the hell am I supposed to figure that one out? Uh, hold on really quick. Uh, hold on. Google some more. Um, I, I guess you were saying exists in Forex analytics meet, meetings. Um, oh, do we have these in Spanish? You have to, uh, uh, Hernan, you have to go to Trufa, the Trufa webinars. Um, hold on. Let me see if I have them here. Webinars right here. Let me go ahead and put this link for you. This is not a true for webinar. Okay. All right. So that's going to be for you, Hernan. Hopefully, um, hopefully you understood that. Okay. So let's talk about the markets. I wanted to talk about Bitcoin really quick. And I want to talk about my feelings about Bitcoin. Um, Stocks are coming under a little bit of pressure, but the, you notice how they popped right back up to 4230. Like you, you see this right here. S&P dropped and then we bounce back. That, in my opinion, is just well, it's obviously telling us that the market's not ready to to move lower at this point. But what that what that's telling me is um, like if I think the market was getting a little too bearish um, like Bitcoin and we weren't ready to move lower. So you, you, you can see, I still think that this wedge is playing. And so until we get below, you know, really the, this trend line over here, really until we get below this trend line or really this longer term one, you know, so you're talking about 4150 or so, uh, it's hard to be bearish risk. Now, uh, I want to go back to, to talking about Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin's bearish. I think the market is getting too bearish near term. Um, I meant to go grab one. I was going to go grab from my garage a, a ping pong ball. So the, the thing about the market, I'm going to see if I can looking for a prop actually. Well, let's see if I can do it this way. You guys can see my arm, right? So when you have like the market dropping, it'll, it'll hit and then it'll bounce off support, right? Every bounce gets shallow, more shallow, more shallow till eventually, you know, like if you think, of, think about like a ball, right? Like bouncing off a table before it rolls off. That's what Bitcoin, I think, is going to do at the 30,000 level. You, you, you're you going to see these bounces around 30,000 um, and you're going to get this kind of move. Let's see here. You're going to get this kind of move in the charts, right? And then eventually eventually it'll sell off and eventually will fall off the table. That's what I think is going to happen with Bitcoin. But what we're, what we're going to see is we're going to see these aggressive bounces from the support. Um, and, you know, today, tomorrow, we might bounce back. But think about that. If it bounces back to, you know, 36, 37,000, it's still making, you know, lower, it's still making lower highs, right? And so when that's happening, though, Imagine what risk does, you know, bounces and everybody goes, oh, it's the bottom. And so stocks go to new, new highs, right? So you go over to the S&P and, you know, everybody 
probably was seeing the Bitcoin move lower. Right. They're seeing Bitcoin move lower. And all of a sudden you've got this, you know, bounce back in risk. Like you can see it here on the hourly chart. You know, every time it bounces, the S&P is probably going to go like this. Boop. And then, you know, boop. And then, you know, we'll probably pop to new highs. I would think that would be my initial gut instinct right now. Um, but the flip side of that is you're seeing currencies like the dollar Canadian. I'm almost going to take my dollar cat off just to take it off because, you know, we have the Bank of Canada tomorrow. I've been sitting in this thing since Friday at 97 and I'm barely profitable. I mean, so we're right up against resistance. Like, are we going to make it all the way up here? I don't know. I haven't done anything yet. I'm just, you know, I'm thinking out loud because the problem is, is if equities continue up, uh, the dollar Canadian is going to come off of these levels. Um, but you, you see other currencies like, you know, here's the U.S. dollar Norwegian Krona, and that's bounced back pretty good. But I don't know how sustainable this is with equities bouncing, right? Um, so just some food for thought. Uh, dollar Mexican pesos trading heavy down here. I'm really quite surprised we haven't um, we haven't uh, broken lower, especially with this bounce in risk. I'm surprised the dollar Mexican peso hasn't trying to take out these lows yet. But it's actually holding up relatively well. Like I said, with stocks bouncing, you would think that uh, that the dollar Mexican peso would have buckled already, but it hasn't yet. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. I mean, you know, we're still in a triangle here in the Euro. Aussie's not doing much of anything. Just kind of re rejecting that trend line resistance still, but not doing anything. Kiwi is trading a little heavier, right? Um, and that's, like I said, that's pretty much it. I'm not overly excited about anything. You can see that the Euro yen, you know, Canadian yen, they're just kind of trading around. I mean, the Canadian yen is probably at risk of uh, breaking lower. This, if we, if the Canadian yen broke lower, I think I'd be more apt to keep my US dollar Canadian long. So, uh, Jason says, Blake, it looks like these commodity currencies are ignoring these moving moves in risk. They are really diverging. They are, but. Let me before before we get too terribly excited about any of this, Jason. If you guys don't think I'm tired, I'm tired. I I got I drove in last night at like nine o'clock at night. So if I'm yawning and you have to excuse me, I I, I have an I have an interview with uh, uh, Mark Faber in twenty minutes. So I'm going to try not to yawn for that. That's an important one. Uh, that's why I'm wearing a collared shirt. If you guys are wondering uh, the every time we've seen this divergence, Jason and risk like risk moves higher, you know, commodity currencies diverge. Eventually anybody who's short the commodity currencies eventually gets squeezed because as stocks continue to grind higher, they eventually say, you know what? Screw it. Stocks aren't going lower. Let's, you know, let's just cover up what we, you know, our shorts. I agree. Whenever the stock market decides it wants to move lower, we have to be short the Aussie. We have to be short the Canadian currency. We have to. But show me that time that stocks are going to go down. It's probably going to be the trade of the year. Shorting them but Jason says they don't go down. That's right. So if they, if they're not going down, you know, and you short the Aussie cause you're like, man, it's super divergent, blah, blah, blah. And then you short the Aussie, which by the way, I, I still have a little short Aussie exposure. <laughs> I mean, I'm long Euro Aussie. So, you know, you, you, you know, stocks start to go up and everybody that's short Aussie say, yeah, screw it, you know, just cover it up, right? So, 
and Alex says, I've been waiting for that for ages. I'm hoping that'll go, that we will go down soon. Yeah, me too. I mean, we've, we've all been waiting for stocks to come down and you, you know what prolonged the, in, the inevitable was COVID, right? COVID really threw a monkey wrench into my ideas from two years ago. If COVID never hit, you know, S&P would probably be trading at like 2,500 right now. The reason why we're at 4,200 in the S&P is massive liquidity thrown at the markets to avoid a stock market depression. That's the only thing that's keeping us up right now. You know it, I know it, everybody else knows it, but it is what it is, right? The Fed and every other central bank threw the kitchen sink at the market. So now we're going to get slow growth and higher inflation, which is what we talked about earlier. It's stagflation. That's probably the realistic next two years. Zero to no growth and higher inflation. And you know who that sucks for? The non-billionaires. Right? You know, obviously the the, the top 1% doesn't doesn't really care, but for those of us that live in the, you know, 90% lower, it matters, right? We, we deal with higher inflation and slow growth. So anyway, um, but that's pretty much it guys. I, I'm going to, uh, I got to roll cause I got to run off to this, uh, this meeting. I, I hope you guys love this interview. I'm really excited to interview Mark Faber because he's a, he's a, PhD in economics, and he's just, he's, uh, the guy's cool. Swiss guy, he's awesome. Um, you know, and, he, and he's pretty constructive cryptocurrency, so I'm, I'm really excited to hear what he has to say about, I'm going to talk, just so you guys know, I'm going to talk to him about, um, about low interest rates, higher inflation, you know, what that really means to all of us. I want to talk to him about uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, there's a couple other things I was going to talk to him about, but um, I'll have to pull up my notes. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy it. It should be fun. Uh, let's see. Amira, one last thing. Amira asked to uh, the IWM. We're breaking out. We're breaking higher. False breakdown in the triangle, leading to a breakout here. So, and you know what? That doesn't surprise me. Now with stocks moving higher. So we should trade to at least 236. And, you know, this will be a slight, you know, slight breakout, maybe even higher than that, depending on what S&Ps do. All right, guys. Uh, Cedric asks, is it, it Blake, is it private or open interview? It will be, it's a private interview, but I will uh, publish it probably tonight or tomorrow. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great one. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. Thanks, everybody.